What's up guys, welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, we're gonna be breaking down Sicario 2. Did it get better? Did it get worse? How did it get? Is that chick still in it? Did she go away forever? Mm, I hope not, because she's really annoying. Would you just let it go? No, she's terrible. Stop talking about her looks. They don't put her in movies when because she's, she's so ugly. That's not how being in a movie works. I don't care how she looks, she's so annoying. I don't like this job. Sicario. Numero dos, let's go. Don't do that. Don't do that. Drummer boy. No. The beat one. What's the one with it? Stomp the art. Oh, send it right now. They're sniper fools. Just send it right now. Snap, snap. Sick, sick. So the, I think they're wearing the same outfits from the first movie. Except but it's now it's nighttime. Nighttime. Wow. wow. It's crazy how the difference works with black outfits. Worth noting. <laughs> Noon in the desert, not the best get up. I don't know why they shot me, Sarge. I had my black face paint on. Shut up. <laughs> I don't know how they could see me, Sergeant. I put Listen. the black on my face. Did you know that you're in the desert in the middle what of the fucking, fucking day? King of the Hill? <laughs> we watched hey, this. Sergeant, I took that black and smeared it on my face. Oh, man. Stop talking. So Nods, clearing under Nods is terrible. So I think in the first one they had the monovision, which is just one tube, and that completely throws off like your depth perception. It's mm -hmm. awful. So the best thing you could have, well, the best thing we had was the 41s, which is the two light tubes, but they're white phosphorus. So you see everything in black and white. Mm. Super nice. I've never run the quad tubes. I've heard they're heavy as fuck and people don't really like to run the, the quads. And then I've also heard that they're dope as fuck because you get some peripheral. I don't know. I've never run quads. But under nods is tough. It's hard to get depth perception. It's hard to make out details of the enemy. You know, we're taught hands, hands, hands. So I'm checking for your hands to see for weapons. Under nods, that's difficult to see. I've been in training as an SF guy. We're doing CQB, multi-cell, multi-breach, which means... Uh, we have two explosion breaches going on in the same kill house uh, at the same time. So you're doing a, 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 a C4 detonation. You know, I'm doing a C4 detonation. It's loud as fuck. There's bangs going off in the same building and our teams are flowing in with live ammo. So it's super dangerous because we want to shoot each other. Mm -hmm. And then somebody has fucking meh, 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 the big round wheel. What's the, the, like the concrete cutter? It cuts metal. So you can cut like steel um grates on doors mm -hmm. the problem with that thing is when you're going to clear as a number two man under nods and somebody has your your uh, door breacher tool your cutting breaching tool you're fucking grinding away at the metal it's shooting sparks well that spark puts off light and that light blows up your nods mm. so it's it sucks and it's hard so anyway clearing under nods and shooting and everything it's an art that takes getting used to but when you're good at it you fucking own the night, and it's a it's a badass situation because you know that everyone else is at a disadvantage. Oh, that's what we assume, yes. Any kids? Two. What's the age of the youngest? Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, if you want to start a war, kidnap a prince. King will start it for you. Okay. So this is where this movie, and it's only 20 minutes in, so the whole premise of this movie, this is where it goes south for me. Mm -hmm. So Secretary of Defense calls him in and he's like, hey man, we need you to do what you do, which is go in and disrupt, uh, you know, cartel or whoever. Just go raise up fucking hell, according to the first movie. Your job is to go stir the shit, right? Stir right. the pot, get them fired up, and we could confuse people, whatever our political agenda is. So he calls him in and he says, hey, man, we need you to do this, but there's a caveat to that. The bonus is your weapon's clear. Weapon's hot. You can do whatever you want. Shoot whoever you mm. want. 
I was kind of under the impression that they were doing that anyway. Because they... <laughs> well, judging by the first movie. But... The first movie, they fucking killed everybody. <laughs> so, like, how are you going to come in and be like, hey, man, your weapon's hot on this one? I was like, yeah, I've been weapons hot the whole time, motherfucker. Like, I don't know if you saw that. Nobody survived. <laughs> that whole last movie, the whole fucking Mexico is dead. I don't understand why... So then he tells them the, the caveat to taking this mission is that all that access is denied. No CAG, no Air Force, no Air Watch, no none of that. Mm -hmm. So all the U.S. support is gone. You're telling me that, hey, now you can go do the same mission, but we're taking away billions of infrastructure, of military forces of intelligence the best technology on the mm -hmm. planet you know what i'm saying like the number one fighting force on the planet right. we're taking away all our best assets airstrikes intelligence all that stuff is gone you don't see a red flag there like instantly i'd be like well of course yeah why why is it gone if you're gonna pull all your assets away from me it's because you're trying to disconnect from me right which means that i'm the 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 head of the snake that you're looking to cut off once I serve mm -hmm. your purpose. So if I was to go from a mission where they said, you can't be weapons free, which kill everybody you want, but you have access to CAG, Air Force, bases, money enough to do private jets right. and operate, I'd be well comfortable in that situation. Because I know the government's not going to put CAG soldiers with me to go get fucking double cross right because mm -hmm. we're, we're all part of the government but then you say now you could operate but you don't have any access to what we do so then what he does is to solve this problem of where does this come from suddenly he's at dinner with this guy what do you need everything drones with attack capability you have blackhawks right one two of those i need logistics communications equipment compatible with the so-called jcu First phase, I need a strike team, two snipers, I need a demolition team. You want to get Ukraine? I got Russians on the payroll, brother. Don't put me in that position. Where's the coup? That was it. It's an extraction. You going to Ukraine? <laughs> a little foreshadowing there? Anyway. Brother, you don't want to know. I don't need specifics, but I... So this is it. Know. That's the last time that this ominous figure that has forces in ties with russia mm -hmm. shows up so they're like wait a minute we want to disconnect them from the u.s military and then fuck them over later and tell them to cut ties and all this stuff but then we have a problem how do we cut ties where does he get all the the same things from so we can make a decent movie oh just have him have dinner at a swanky restaurant <laughs> with some fucking russian guy and that explains everything we're just supposed to accept the fact that you could just call some fucking guy get and he's gonna say I want $10 million a month. That's how much he's, he wants. $10 million a month. And then, voila, you have an American fighting force. You have two Apaches. You have fucking surveillance. You have drones. You have everything. I, don't get me wrong. I'm sure $10 million could buy that. But find me that one guy that you just pay that paycheck to. And he makes it all fucking come aboard with a crew that actually knows what they're doing. For $10 million? I could hire you a bunch of SWAT guys with a bunch of capabilities. When they show up, seem passionate about that. <laughs> don't don't have fucking too high expectations. That's all I can tell you. Empty. One, two, three. Clear. You could do that, and it. it I guess it would be fast. It would just... <laughs> yeah. I mean, why, though? I don't know. I could fire. Boom, 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 Like, just that fast. I don't understand why I would have to... <laughs> go like this and turn my fucking light on. That was theatrics. <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> why? Why? Just fucking do, 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 do. Like, he's a fat fuck that's already shot twice. Fucking one to the head. That's but a weird, it's a they, weird time to pull out the... They used that for the um, trailer. Mm. So that was that moment where it's like Sicario. Two. Telling. And then he uses the shittiest pistol. Like, if he had this, you know, 
It's a Glock, a Timney trigger. You guys see that? Timney trigger. We got the uh, Crimson Trace Rad. And we have a fucking the barrel. We got a compensator. I mean, Magwell. This thing's sick, right? <laughs> but what I'm getting at is he has a Beretta, which we had when I first joined the Army. We had Berettas. Beretta's an Italian made pistol. It's a piece of shit. It's got a two stage trigger. It's garbage. I don't know why he's carrying that piece of shit, and I don't know why you'd want to do fucking that thing with it, but whatever. I'm not I thought that was pretty. I'm not Before they get to the vehicle interdiction, mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty spot on of the the TC. Interdiction? Yeah, so we're about to get into a vehicle interdiction. So an interdiction is just like stopping somebody and then Oh, okay. Prohibiting their movement for an extraction. Okay. So a vehicle interdiction. In this movie, they do two interdictions. They do a vehicle interdiction. They do a helicopter interdiction. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea with an interdiction is that, like, I want to remove a high-value target from that vehicle. Mm -hmm. So I need to prevent movement from that vehicle and then pull safely the high-value target. Okay. So it's not an, it's not an ambush because then I'm trying to kill everybody. So if I want to do an ambush, I would prevent the movement in a kill zone. Right. I would have all my guys online, and as soon as you're in that kill zone, we'll initiate with an IED, an explosion, a RPG, uh, a downed tree, whatever is gonna block your movement. You're gonna stop, and we're all gonna open up fire. That's a basic assault. That's assault 101. Mm. We're gonna move forward to the LOA, which is the limit of advance, which is just past the kill zone, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna clear and everything, make sure we, we took everybody out. That's if you wanna kill somebody. You can't use those tactics if you have a high value target that you want to extract from the vehicle because you obviously want them alive. So you have to figure out a more discreet way to block them and then get in there using uh, speed, surprise, violence of actions, mm. violence of action. But I thought it was pretty awesome of the guy, the TC, to recognize that the cell phone service going out was enough of an indicator. He said, "Step on it, step on it." Why? So speed is security, right? So if there was an ambush and you're tracking my speed, let's say your ambush is, is set here, right? You're tracking my speed 35 miles an hour. You're timing it. Mm -hmm. Suddenly I s detect something's wrong and I do and a hundred miles an hour, 60, 70, whatever my vehicle is willing to do. Right. And I punch past it. There's more of a chance that you're going to miss me at that speed on your timed target attack. But it was spot on for him to identify that whether he knows the reason why the cell phones are going out mm -hmm. or not, he has a hunch and he tells his guys, speed up, speed up, speed up, making it harder to time their attack. Gotcha. Which he ends up, they end up doing an IED uh, to stop the, f the first big. So here's the, the issue with that, and this is something I learned from the police department, because we would do a lot of like, uh, you know, you got a guy with a felony warrant, right. and we're trying to get him. So we would work with fugitive units, and they'd be like, hey, you need to pit this car in. The problem is people would come in close, and they think that that's enough to pit the car in. If you leave even six inches of space, mm -hmm. that guy punches in reverse, boom, he hits you. You fly back, that six inches becomes two feet. Right. Then he puts it in drive slam and then that becomes two feet now he's got enough room to get out mm -hmm. so you literally need to be touching like super close you to need to be touching no momentum them. like they can't they can't move at all they can't get that momentum so the rear driver what they didn't hear how he hit him and then kept pushing all right gunning it bah, 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 bah. that's 100 percent correct the mm -hmm. guy in the front if they had a front vehicle that was trying to pin in do put in reverse bah, 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 bah. they both stay on the gas so to keep that thing pinned in. The issue I have here is the guy that came in to block the um, horizontal road or the, the east-west road, mm -hmm. running road. He just stopped like five feet before. Right. But at the same time, they had like multiple people out. So the, the only thing, your issue is the driver. If you were just trying to do an interdiction and kill everybody inside, you would just snap that driver and then you don't have anything to worry about. Mm -hmm. Sí, 
me deja así. No tiene nada en nadie, te lo juro, por favor. Si tienes sed, ahí hay agua. No te lo juro, por favor. Okay. So the whole idea there is that they're trying to sell that she was kidnapped by a rival cartel. Right. But the issue is they know that in Mexico, they can't secure a location good enough to mm -hmm. bring her and be safe. So they brought her to Texas. But the problem with that is as they're bringing her into a fucking airfield in America and then transferring her to the safe house, if she starts hearing the accents of people right, talking yeah. and they're speaking English, instantly she's going to pick up that she's not in Mexico anymore. Right. So they had to earmuff her and then blindfold her and then put the bag over her head. Gotcha. She has to be completely not aware of what's ha happening until she gets into the safe house. Yeah. So it, it's just people might not think that why the headphones is on is because if she hears people suddenly speaking English, she's going to know she was in, she's in America. What's your field of view? You just said you could see 10 miles in every direction. Mm -hmm. And then you tell them that the paved road ends in half a mile. Mm. So you get no fucking chance to prepare. But the issue with the paved road is is a bunch of things. So first of all, the dust that's going to kick up from the vehicles. Right, yeah. We had that issue in Afghanistan. It can get so thick. Well, I mean, we had that feeling. So we were, I was used to it. <laughs> but you can go so thick that you can't see anything. They right. just dust you out, right? You mm -hmm. can't follow tightly. It separates your stack, and all of a sudden your security is messed up. I did have an issue when I was watching this as to how they separate their gun trucks. We would typically do every other for a gun truck. Right. Um, you know, but whatever. Maybe they have their reasons. They separate their gun trucks kind of weird. But then they're going into a dirt road, which means all that kick up, they can't follow as closely. Right. They don't have good visibility and all that stuff. He tries to pull out a thermal <laughs> in the middle of the fucking day. Like a white hot thermal to see through dust. Which would be bright white. Yeah. Yeah. I would never maybe I'm missing something. Maybe there's a thermal that sees through dust. Hmm. I don't know. I've yes. never heard of it. The white hot thermals that we have, you you're not it's not gonna do you. Any fucking good. Well, Off your line, on your right. Contact right. Oh, down, down. So the gun or turn on him and start lighting him up. Oh, 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 So your most valuable asset is your gunners, right? Uh -huh. Because you can't, you're in armor. So basically you're in a bubble. You can't shoot back. And the best thing you can do in a gunfight is to shoot back because it gets their heads down. You could kill them, whatever. So the problem is their gunner turned on them. So their own gunner started lighting them up with the 240. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it's 240. I don't think it's 249. I think it's 240. So yeah, 240. The gunner started lighting them up. So he just turned He's got his pivot. He's got, and then he just turns and starts lighting them up, and that's who's lighting up the front of the Humvee. Hmm. And then they had an established attack point um, with the RPGs, and that's when they started shooting RPGs. So they had a, a linear assault. Right. So they're going to assault, you know, fucking, you shoot them up with a gunner, then we'll hit them with the RPGs, we'll push through and we'll kill all the Americans. So that's a bad, bad situation because they can't shoot back. So essentially they're waiting in the armor until the gunners run out of ammo so they can get out and start shooting back. Hmm. Hoping that those RPGs don't fucking hit them and tear them up. Because nice. you're not, you could survive, you know, some rounds uh -huh. with the the five five six and the um, two four nine. Maybe some, you know, the seven six two. I don't know how many rounds you're gonna take to the the Humvee and survive it. Mm -hmm. But you ain't surviving a fucking RPG. Mm. And you, those things are accurate from as close as like three hundred meters. An RPG is fucking accurate. So they're in a bad bad spot. And then his vehicle gets stuck. Horrible, horrible spot. All right, so go to 140. 
עצם שהגילה אותה עוד פעם. So they watched him on a camera kill. That's when he watched him kill him. Huh? And that's when you know, like, like he, Max signed up. He was like, I'll kill him myself. Talk about taking out fucking uh, Bote. Huh? What's his name? Alejandro? I don't know. It's Alejandro. Queen, have you seen Queen of the South? No. Bote. <laughs> He's the man. <laughs> Bote. Bote is a man. He's like, we got to take care of Teresita. So straws? Huh? Straws? What's that? Like a straw? In Spanish? Popote. That's a straw in Spanish? Yeah. Bote? Popote. Popote? Yeah. Is a straw? Straw. I was hoping Bote would be like assassin or something. No. Because Pote, and if you've seen Queen of the South, Pote is the best character, dude. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing about his name is like intimidating or good. He's like, you got to take care of Teresita. <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> so Max, he says he was going to go kill him himself, Alejandro. Uh-huh. And he sees him gets killed. And then he's like super fucking distraught. So clearly he was going to let him go. He was just finding a way to let him go. He wasn't going to kill his homie. Okay. And then... He goes on a fucking killing spree and just fucks everybody up. Ooh. Ready to see that? So that's where he got shot in the face. Glad we didn't have to do that. That was his homie. Hmm. Like he played it like he was just a connect, but that was his homie. Case with subject's exact location inside the car. Rules of engagement. What do you say? Rules of engagement. I always ask that fucking question. Fuck them all. Fuck them all I love it. He's like, fuck it. Wipe it clean. Wipe it clean. I just... The whole, like, saying rules of engagement, like a question, like, all the time. Like, dude, you didn't get the rules of engagement, like... <laughs> way before you start. Way the fucking before you... Yeah, like, in the chopper on the way. Rules of engagement. Mm-hmm. Kill them all. Like, bitch... We had a fucking, like, pre-mission brief where we talked about it. All right. Anyone who's alive, go and die. So you never Check. asked for them, like, in the middle of... No! You have, that's why you have your mission brief, so you could talk about it. Hey, what are the rules of engagement? Like, hey, motherfucker, we told them, don't be here. So if they're here, they dead. Kill them. <laughs> or, like, hey, man, rules of engagement apply. Like, you know, if you see a weapon, take them out. If you're getting attacked, attack them back. Like, we'll talk about this shit in pre-mission planning. That's the whole point. And, like, uh, the final mission, you know, brief. Right. The final uh, op brief is, like, that's where you discuss all that shit. On a bird, on the way, 10 minutes out, <laughs> you're asking, like, what the fucking rules of engagement are? Like, motherfucker, you should know. I wouldn't confirm or deny what I would do in this situation. <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I would do the morally right thing. So he he gets shot in the face, which is believable. I mean, it's a 50 cent shot. It's, sure. I, I think one of the best parts of this movie is that it's believable. It is more explorer right here. It's a right, pin see, my ride. Right, so I have a lot of cousins. You want to know what they would do? That's what they would do. <laughs> and they would ride that shit all day long. If, it, yeah. it's, if it's not that, it would be an F-150. Yeah. But it would be a, the paint, lightning. a color that's way too bright with yeah. rims. That's it, I, dude. That shot is sick as fuck, though. And yeah. look at these two choppers. You imagine catching those? You'd be so proud of yourself. And then everyone would just watch and be like, "What happened?" Can you imagine being in a fucking F one fifty and then seeing those choppers going up on your shit? You're fucked. Let's no, watch this so and see done. what they do. Let's see how they do a chopper interdiction in this movie. Super low. <laughs> oh shit. Don't shoot, just be ready. I don't know, if I saw helicopters, I'd shoot at them. They're gonna stop them? Maybe they know something. Nah. He's landing. Go. Oh, but he shot that over the other helicopter. So that was a sick ass shot. So the chopper, the helicopter interdiction is dope as fuck. Mm-hmm. But they clearly made some adjustments for theatrical purposes. Right. Like following the vehicles and then coming over them. Why would you do that? 
Like I had a buddy who got shot in a chopper on an infill and took a round through both his legs. Mm. So like it's soft skin. If they shoot you, you're fucked. So why would you come up the rear end of a vehicle full of packs with guns? All they got to do is go pop, 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 pop. Fucking pilot's dead. Why would you do that? So clearly that was the Hollywood part is like because they wanted the shots with the fucking vehicles and the choppers at the same thing. Right. But what was seemed accurate to me was the the chopper that came in sideways and dusted it right down on the road to block the road with a gun pointed at it. Mm, yeah. Because that's not a vulnerable position. Like, listen, motherfucker, do something. Yeah. Likely it's going to be a minigun with a door gunner. <laughs> and he that's 3,000 rounds a minute of 7.62. Jesus. You're fucking done, son. Like, I'll put you to rounds sleep. A minute. Yeah. So I, if I had a minigun... And I'm a door gunner, and you come in and squat me right in front of a fucking patrol. Point at me, bro. I love. <laughs> I fucking love it. It's gonna go sound like this, man. <laughs> and you're gonna be up there with Jesus, being like, "What? What was that noise?" And you're like, "It's a fucking humming in my ear, like this fucker." And he's a man. All your cousins gonna be up there, like it's a rap for that whole fucking squad. And I've shot a minigun in in combat, dude. And, like, mm. I told my buddy, I was like, hey, man, because he was the gunner in uh-huh. our Matt V, and he had the minigun on. I was like, hey, they're shooting from over here. And he's like, where? I was like, right there. And he goes, right here? Man. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> that fucking puts it down, son. So that's what is more realistic, is you're going to come in from the sides why would I come in from behind you? Let's come in from the sides ahead of the convoy, right? Mm-hmm. So the helicopter's up here. The convoy's coming in. I'm going to squat it right before. Mm-hmm. So you're going to drive into me. And so I'm going to have the mini minigun ready to go on right. it. Right. That makes sense. Right? And then the second helicopter is going to come in from way in the back. Whew, come in fast. Scoop it down. I like how low they work because it's fast. It's stealthy. So you can't see them from up here. Mm-hmm. Come in hot. Squat it down right behind. And then have the angle to where I could let loose on you. But our angles are going to be like this. Our, our sectors of fire are going to be, uh, you know, intersecting mm. in the center of that convoy. So we're not putting each other at risk, right? Yeah. So we can do this. And both of us could have sectors of fire. This was sick as fuck. But there's definitely some Hollywood theatrics for the shots. Mm. In there. I thought that this was real and raw. And I completely forgot about the last scene where he's like, he's fucked up, but he's alive. Yeah. Which... Mm. He comes back. Come on. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. You ain't coming back. Come on. You ain't coming back. You got shot in the face and left for dead in the desert. If you get tied up and shot by the cartel, you're not you're not coming back. So and on top of that, he was waterboarding himself with his own blood. Yeah. He had he had it tied over his face. So he's choking. Yeah. So he's choking. He would choke to death. Like no no joke. You're bleeding so much in your mouth that you need to spit all that up to breathe. He's got a cloth over his face. So he's spitting all that blood into a cloth and then trying to breathe that back in. He would suffocate from his own blood on top of the fact that, you know, the facial wound, he would probably fucking bleed out right. without an ambulance coming to his aid. And then he's just going to not, I'm good, belt buckle, untie that shit, drive off, I'm straight, and then go recruit my own fucking Sicario. Fucking Rico Suave over here got some more tattoos. Oof. Oof. He saw that's life. a sick shot, dude. This is a little bit of light. Meow. That's the same sad. shot. Yeah. The same shot. Same fucking music. Meow. Ooh, he's looking at this. Because that's the one that stitched him out initially on the bus. He was like, yeah, that's him. He knows he's fucked. <laughs> Benicio del Toro is such a beast. Oh, oh, he's about to get fucking molested with the face. He's gonna do his waterboarding trick. Oh, 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 oh. Nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for Sicario 2. Pretty good movie. Not as good as Sicario 1. But there you have it. Beers and breakdowns. See you later. Can you add that to this? Yes.
say we'll see you in the next episode of Full Metal Jacket. Bro.